April 29. David escapes through the wilderness. Hushai told Zadok and Abiathar the priests what Ahithophel had said to Absalom and the elders of Israel, and what he himself had advised instead. Quick, he told them, find David and urge him not to stay at the shallows of the Jordan River tonight. He must go across at once into the wilderness beyond. Otherwise, he will die and his entire army with him. Jonathan and Ahimeaz had been staying at Enrogel so as not to be seen entering and leaving the city. Arrangements had been made for a servant girl to bring them the message they were to take to King David. But a boy spotted them at Enrogel, and he told Absalom about it. So they quickly escaped to Bahurim, where a man hid them down inside a well in his courtyard. The man's wife put a cloth over the top of the well and scattered grain on it to dry in the sun, so no one suspected they were there. When Absalom's men arrived, they asked her, Have you seen Ahimeaz and Jonathan? The woman replied, They were here, but they crossed over the brook. Absalom's men looked for them without success and returned to Jerusalem. Then the two men crawled out of the well and hurried on to King David. Quick, they told him, cross the Jordan tonight. And they told him how Ahithophel had advised that he be captured and killed. So David and all the people with him went across the Jordan River during the night, and they were all on the other bank before dawn. When Ahithophel realized that his advice had not been followed, he saddled his donkey, went to his hometown, set his affairs in order, and hanged himself. He died there and was buried in the family tomb. David soon arrived at Maenaim. By now, Absalom had mobilized the entire army of Israel and was leading his troops across the Jordan River. Absalom had appointed Amasa as commander of his army, replacing Joab, who had been commander under David. Amasa was Joab's cousin. His father was Jether, an Ishmaelite. His mother, Abigail, daughter of Nahash, was the sister of Joab's mother, Zeruiah. Absalom and the Israelite army set up camp in the land of Gilead. When David arrived at Maenaim, he was warmly greeted by Shobai, son of Nahash, who came from Rabbah of the Ammonites, and by Maker, son of Amiel from Lodibar, and by Barzillai of Gilead from Rogalim. They brought sleeping mats, cooking pots, serving bowls, wheat and barley, flour and roasted grain, beans, lentils, honey, butter, sheep, goats, and cheese for David and those who were with him. For they said, You must all be very hungry and tired and thirsty after your long march through the wilderness. Psalm 3 O Lord, I have so many enemies, so many are against me, so many are saying God will never rescue him. But you... O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety, for the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of ten thousand enemies who surround me on every side. Arise, O Lord, rescue me, my God. Slap all my enemies in the face. Shatter the teeth of the wicked. Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. Psalm 63 O God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. Because you are my helper, I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. But those plotting to destroy me will come to ruin. They will go down into the depths of the earth. They will die by the sword and become the food of jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who trust in him will praise him, while liars will be silenced. Absalom's Defeat and Death David now mustered the men who were with him and appointed generals and captains to lead them. He sent the troops out in three groups, placing one group under Joab, one under Joab's brother Abishai, son of Zeruiah, and one under Idai, the man from Gath. The king told his troops, I am going out with you. But his men objected strongly. You must not go, they urged. If we have to turn and run, and even if half of us die, it will make no difference to Absalom's troops. They will be looking only for you. 
You are with ten thousand of us, and it is better that you stay here in the town and send help if we need it. If you think that's the best plan, I'll do it, the king answered. So he stood alongside the gate of the town as all the troops marched out in groups of hundreds and of thousands. And the king gave this command to Joab, Abishai, and Idai: For my sake, deal gently with young Absalom. And all the troops heard the king give this order to his commanders. So the battle began in the forest of Ephraim, and the Israelite troops were beaten back by David's men. There was a great slaughter that day, and 20,000 men laid down their lives. The battle raged all across the countryside, and more men died because of the forest than were killed by the sword. During the battle, Absalom happened to come upon some of David's men. He tried to escape on his mule, but as he rode beneath the thick branches of a great tree, his hair got caught in the tree. His mule kept going and left him dangling in the air. One of David's men saw what had happened and told Joab, I saw Absalom dangling from a great tree. What? Joab demanded. You saw him there and didn't kill him? I would have rewarded you with ten pieces of silver and a hero's belt. I would not kill the king's son for even a thousand pieces of silver, the man replied to Joab. We all heard the king say to you, and Abishai and Idai, for my sake, please spare young Absalom. And if I had betrayed the king by killing his son, and the king would certainly find out who did it, you yourself would be the first to abandon me. Enough of this nonsense, Joab said. Then he took three daggers and plunged them into Absalom's heart as he dangled, still alive, in the great tree. Ten of Joab's young armor-bearers then surrounded Absalom and killed him. Then Joab blew the ram's horn, and his men returned from chasing the army of Israel. They threw Absalom's body into a deep pit in the forest and piled a great heap of stones over it, and all Israel fled to their homes. During his lifetime, Absalom had built a monument to himself in the king's valley, for he said, I have no son to carry on my name. He named the monument after himself, and it is known as Absalom's Monument to this day. David mourns Absalom's death. Then Zadok's son Ahimez said, Let me run to the king with the good news that the Lord has rescued him from his enemies. No, Joab told him, it wouldn't be good news to the king that his son is dead. You can be my messenger another time, but not today. Then Joab said to a man from Ethiopia, Go tell the king what you have seen. The man bowed and ran off. But Ahimeaz continued to plead with Joab, Whatever happens, please let me go too. Why should you go, my son? Joab replied. There will be no reward for your news. Yes, but let me go anyway, he begged. Joab finally said, All right, go ahead. So Ahimeas took the less demanding route by way of the plain and ran to Maenaim ahead of the Ethiopian. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates of the town, the watchman climbed to the roof of the gateway by the wall. As he looked, he saw a lone man running toward them. He shouted the news down to David, and the king replied, If he is alone, he has news. As the messenger came closer, the watchman saw another man running toward them. He shouted down, Here comes another one. The king replied, He also will have news. The first man runs like Ahimeaz, son of Zadok, the watchman said. He is a good man and comes with good news, the king replied. Then Ahimeaz cried out to the king, Everything is all right. He bowed before the king with his face to the ground and said, Praise to the Lord your God, who has handed over the rebels who dared to stand against my lord the king. What about young Absalom, the king demanded. Is he all right? Ahimeaz replied, When Joab told me to come, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't know what was happening. Wait here, the king told him. So Ahimeaz stepped aside. Then the man from Ethiopia arrived and said, I have good news for my lord the king. Today the Lord has rescued you from all those who rebelled against you. What about young Absalom? the king demanded. Is he all right? And the Ethiopian replied, May all of your enemies, my lord the king, both now and in the future, share the fate of that young man. The king was overcome with emotion. He went up to the room over the gateway and burst into tears. And as he went, he cried, O my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. O Absalom, my son, my son. Joab rebukes the king. Word soon reached Joab that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom. 
As all the people heard of the king's deep grief for his son, the joy of that day's victory was turned into deep sadness. They crept back into the town that day as though they were ashamed and had deserted in battle. The king covered his face with his hands and kept on crying, Oh, my son, Absalom! Oh, Absalom, my son, my son! Then Joab went to the king's room and said to him, We saved your life today and the lives of your sons, your daughters, and your wives and concubines. Yet you act like this, making us feel ashamed of ourselves. You seem to love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that your commanders and troops mean nothing to you. It seems that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died, you would be pleased. Now, go out there and congratulate your troops, for I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a single one of them will remain here tonight. Then you will be worse off than ever before. So the king went out and took his seat at the town gate. And as the news spread throughout the town that he was there, everyone went to him. Meanwhile, the Israelites who had supported Absalom fled to their homes. And throughout all the tribes of Israel, there was much discussion and argument going on. The people were saying, The king rescued us from our enemies and saved us from the Philistines, but Absalom chased him out of the country. Now Absalom, whom we anointed to rule over us, is dead. Why not ask David to come back and be our king again? Then King David sent Zadok and Abiathar the priests to say to the elders of Judah, Why are you the last ones to welcome back the king into his palace? For I have heard that all Israel is ready. You are my relatives, my own tribe, my own flesh and blood. So why are you the last ones to welcome back the king? And David told them to tell Amasa, Since you are my own flesh and blood, like Joab, may God strike me and even kill me if I do not appoint you as commander of my army in his place. Then Amasa convinced all the men of Judah, and they responded unanimously. They sent word to the king, Return to us and bring back all who are with you. David's return to Jerusalem. So the king started back to Jerusalem, and when he arrived at the Jordan River, the people of Judah came to Gilgal to meet him and escort him across the river. Shimei, son of Gera, the man from Bahurim in Benjamin, hurried across with the men of Judah to welcome King David. A thousand other men from the tribe of Benjamin were with him, including Ziba, the chief servant of the house of Saul, and Ziba's fifteen sons and twenty servants. They rushed down to the Jordan to meet the king. They crossed the shallows of the Jordan to bring the king's household across the river, helping him in every way they could. David's Mercy to Shimei As the king was about to cross the river, Shimei fell down before him. My lord, the king, please forgive me, he pleaded. Forget the terrible thing your servant did when you left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. I know how much I sinned. That is why I have come here today, the very first person in all Israel, to greet my lord, the king. Then Abishai, son of Zeruiah, said, Shimei should die, for he cursed the Lord's anointed king. Who asked your opinion, you sons of Zeruiah? David exclaimed. Why have you become my adversary today? This is not a day for execution, but for celebration. Today I am once again the king of Israel. Then, turning to Shimei, David vowed, Your life will be spared. David's Kindness to Mephibosheth Now Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, came down from Jerusalem to meet the king. He had not cared for his feet, trimmed his beard, or washed his clothes since the day the king left Jerusalem. Why didn't you come with me, Mephibosheth? the king asked him. Mephibosheth replied, My lord the king, my servant Ziba deceived me. I told him, Saddle my donkey so I can go with the king, for as you know I am crippled. Ziba has slandered me by saying that I refuse to come, but I know that my lord the king is like an angel of God, so do what you think is best. All my relatives and I could expect only death from you, my lord, but instead you have honored me by allowing me to eat at your own table. What more can I ask? You've said enough, David replied. I've decided that you and Ziba will divide your land equally between you. Give him all of it, Mephibosheth said. I am content just to have you safely back again, my lord the king. 